Uh, yeah. Oh, oh, what is that? What is it? There's eyes back there. Oh Look my at gosh. It. Dude, this is like 400. It goes way up in there. We just heard a Cody behind us. Um. What are we do with the rooster? We did the polls. What's the result? What's our decision? The poll says we spare him the trauma. We spare him all of the torment of having to watch all of that. I was leaning towards putting him in the trap, but we said the poll will speak for itself. We did, and I think it was overwhelming. It wasn't <laughs> it was. barely, it wasn't 50-50. It was like 90% says no, no. And you know, I understand something too. This is what a lot of folks said in the comments. Let me turn this off. This makes a lot of sense actually. If we were to use that trap and we were to catch the coyote, we'd still have to put him down. Mm -hmm. But that means we'd have to be right looking him in the eye when yeah. we did so. That would be harder to do, don't you think, than doing it from a distance, from yeah. 50 yards. Yeah. And so I, I, I get that, and I feel like it would be a lot easier just to go ahead and set the stand, call him in if we can, get a shot from a, from a distance instead of putting him through all of that and then putting ourselves through all of that. Cause walking up to a cage at this close of range and making that kind of a shot, even on a predator would be hard. It'd be tough. Yeah, I don't want to cry in front of you. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to cry in front of you. <laughs> I promised Jamie I would try to stand up and be a man and not cry in front of you tonight. So, so Jamie's super excited that we're sparing Rocky the rooster. Yeah. And that you guys finally got a rooster for your homestead. Uh, that's, that's not, that is not <laughs> correct. This rooster will find himself at I'm a Survivor Sanctuary. Perfect. For that farm, yes. He, he will not stay here. We want to keep the peace and quiet of Longhorn Lester. I love it. And we don't need any roosters. That's fine. So tell us, lay us the plan for tonight. What, we're, what are we about okay. to go do? So what, I've already loaded my weapon. I'm ready to go. Uh, we have, a, come on, walk over. So we have an electronic call that has tons of different sounds on here that we can call in. Uh, it has a long range on it, so we're good with that. Uh, I have my rifle, and then I'm guessing you'll have your rifle. I believe that what we'll do once we get set up in a stand is um, one of us will have their rifle ready, and the second one of us will control the uh, electronic call. When you are, have our Predator in range, we stop the call, we make the, you know about that? Oh yeah, tell my audience what that is. So this is actually a really dumb thing that a coyote does. I don't know why they do it, but uh, a coyote, even in danger, even on the run, you make a certain sound, he'll stop and like, what is that? What is that? And so everyone knows that. You make that little kissy sound and they'll stop and look at you. And that's exactly when you take the shot. Yep. And so I think that you should take the shot. I'll be more than happy to make a kissy sound. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to be your camera guy. I have my new rifle. I'm excited to use it. So, you're going to let me do the. You're going to let me do the calling, right? Yeah, for, certainly. Can you make a kissy noise? Mm. Is that how it goes? That's not how it goes. You're going to suck a little. Oh, thing. there it was. That was it. I know exactly what you're talking about, and we're going to get them. <laughs> okay, we're going to get them. And so, whatever happens tonight, we'll show you guys. And I think tomorrow we're actually going to go looking. You know where several dens are. We at, know right? where some dens are at. So tomorrow morning we'll get up early before it gets hot, and we'll go do a little den searching okay sounds good to me all right let's, let's get going it. sure okay lester's gonna set up his call and we've got a deer blind right there about 25 yards away he does have some fresh bait um roadkill that he got i say fresh got some roadkill set up uh, so the, the the lure of the smell it's been set up for a couple days i think or a day or so um, right now we're gonna get the call set up I think we're ready. Do you hear that, Lester? You hear him? I hear him. Okay, we are set up and ready to go. If we get any action at all, I'll let you guys know. I think we're gonna have some luck tonight. 
Good luck, Lester. Happy hunting. Thank you for your help in all of this. Yeah, for sure. I'm trying to figure out how to turn the volume up. It says it's set on 20, but we want to go higher than that. Okay. We just heard a coyote behind us. Um, it just did it again. We'll keep you guys updated. I'm going to leave the green light on. That's okay, right? It should be. Now, he may come from behind us and come right on the side of us to the front. Yeah. We're going to wait till he's over here. We don't have a shooting lane behind us at all. Lester, what are you doing? Well, I am putting my gear away properly. We had a successful hunt. Would you say so? Yeah. So I'm gonna let Lester here a minute. Want, when we get to the house, you wanna talk to him? Yeah. We're gonna go back up to the house and I'm gonna let you tell, I'm gonna let him tell you what's going on. But that was exciting. And I have some questions for your people too. Yep. I am wondering, after we shot the first one, how long would we have to wait before others begin to come back out again? Yeah. Or would they ever come back out again? Because after you shoot a deer, you're done for the day, right? Not or, necessarily, oh, no. Oh, I've oh. shot and they've circled back around, shot them again. Oh, let me grab that call real fast. Oh yeah. So I ended up being Lester's cameraman. There's no way we could both record while he's taking the shot and hunting. So, um, so yeah, we we actually have a real cameraman right there. And that we're a lot closer to you. Do you think you got any pictures of it on there? Because it was right there in front of that by I that think, bush. I think I have a great. I think I'll have great pictures. I can't see though because it doesn't. It has an SD card. So now I'm gonna think everything we hear is Cody because things got pretty intense. We, we, we started doing, we're, we're trying different calls. And then we came to the conclusion, let's do a Cody rabbit fight, right? Lester got like Cody rabbit fight and then Lester went to do a distress. So this, is, this is actually very scientific okay. what we're doing here. So I want to record Sean talking to his people about what we did because this is the probably the smartest thing that I've ever seen you do. <laughs> Seriously, I mean I've seen you do some smart things and some dumb things. Yes. But this was a very smart thing. I got my camera on kind of just set up there. Okay, I'm gonna put my camera up here so we can hear it too. So So Sean was controlling the you wanted me to I don't know why. He insisted that I do the shooting. Whatever, fine. I, I was excited about using the rifle. But um you were controlling the sound device, and even though I had it preset to a coyote howling, you had you changed all of that into a different. Yep. So what we so what we end up doing, we did the coyote howl, and then waited like five minutes. We came back and we did a like a raccoon and coyote fight, and then that turned into we did a pup distress. You said you've been hearing a lot of yep. maybe not pups, but. Yelping, yeah, yeah, yelping okay. from yeah. So yelping. then we did that. So we changed it to the fighting and then to the yelp, yelping the puppies. So what you were doing was kind of logically putting in order what would happen in a real yes. if there were a raccoon tussling with the coyote, yeah, and then the pups yelping in distress. Yep. So then we paused for I think we paused for like ten minutes. We're just sitting there. Yeah, we're actually talking, and all of a sudden well, whispering, whispering. But then we hear a howl over here. I heard something behind us. There were at least three. At least. I think one was up here by your house, honestly, by up, up on the side on of the hill. hill. And so it went from here, 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 and they were like, oh my gosh, did you hear that? And then all it, everything just went crazy. Yeah, that's when I began to grow hair on my head. And that doesn't <laughs> happen very often for me. But no, I could feel like goosebumps because we didn't close the door behind us. Yeah. And I'm thinking it wouldn't come up in here with us, but it was walking around it behind was, us. It absolutely was. And so, no. Uh, but I thought it was clever the way you made the succession of sounds scientific. You put some science to it's, it. It seemed to work. I mean, it, it did work because before that we had nothing for an hour. Yeah, like nothing. And so that was that was neat. And so I'm going to remember that. Thank you. All right. So there was so from the vantage point of both windows where we had the bait, it was a perfect shot for either one of us. We both had a perfect view. But the problem is the coyote came from down alongside the river. He came up from the side. And he was he refused to come out into the opening. He kept coming just far enough to keep this bush between you and he. Now from my angle I could see him, but from your angle you couldn't. 
Not only that, there's actually a tree that leans to one side which goes right in front of your yeah. viewpoint. So you never could see. I don't, Once he ducked back, you couldn't see him. I could only see his eyes yeah. through the brush. And you, we may have it on camera. I have no clue because you haven't looked at the We have a yet. game cam set up that was hopefully will capture that okay. moment. Yeah, so that was that was crazy. But yeah, but now uh, I feel bad. I do. I, I legit feel bad that it wasn't a one shot, one kill instant because, you know, when you watch them online, it's always jump, jump, jump pros yeah and uh here but we are it was a nighttime shot it was from at least 50 60 yards yeah uh, and it was through it was looking at his eyes through a little bit of brush but we do know it was a coyote because he came out a couple of times and went back in so it wasn't yeah. like we're taking a blind shot so what's well, crazy to me after you took the shots and ran up on it another one was on the side of the hill I would not have thought, far away. I would have thought it would have been complete. They would have been gone. So the the three that got Mr. Huck, I think, were all about the same size because they all looked to be from probably from the same litter. So I wouldn't be surprised if there was three that were running together. Yeah, oh, so there should be even a third one. It there just somewhere. surprised me with the gunshots. It stuck. It stuck around. Yeah, that's what's crazy. And we were, I think, we were recording whenever that happened. So that should be on. That should be on your footage. So I end up just. I end up being your camera guy, which I was perfectly fine with. They're gonna everything's on on you're gonna be on your page So what should they do if they want to go watch the rest of the video? Hey, I would just I mean I'm like if you want to come by and visit the video and see the the, the all the footage Longhorn Lusters Facebook or YouTube. All right. See you in the morning. Thank you guys Okay, it's the next morning and we're gonna head out and we're going to look for their dens um, I think Lester they said they found several very active dens um, So we're gonna make that trip out there right now and see if we can't get any action and uh, we'll go from there but you say you got some active dens? We have a spot down along the river. It's gonna be a little bit of a drive, uh, a little bit of a walk, and there are dens along the embankments of the river, yeah. Um, your neighbor said he, there was a very active one that they came across last night. We will look for that one. All right, let's find it. That's not my trap, that's one of their hogs. That's a right? hog trap, isn't it? Yeah. Have they actually caught hogs down here? Uh-huh. Yeah, they got them a hog trap here. No hogs. Oh no. Oh my God. Uh, whoops. Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> I well, see like four pieces. I guess our first mission is to locate my gosh darn drums. Oh my god. Oh my god. So Lester's getting some footage of, of the area and uh, the trees are huge here. Really big tall trees and he went up through a little small window and the dang thing would not land here. Lost service signal and then it did a mercy landing right to the top of the pine tree. You said you had big rattlesnakes here too right? Big what? Rattlesnakes. Yeah, and look at this drop off right here, sir. Look where it was. Look, it had to have gone down this 30, 40 foot drop. Wow. This is the pine tree. There it is right there to your left. You see it? A piece of it, anyways. Oh, God. That's the, that's the bulk of it, I believe. Wow. Baby, I am so. Oh, look, showing my battery. Wow. <laughs> I told you I seen pieces. Wow. <laughs> Plenty of battery left. Yeah. Oh, baby, I'm so sorry. I seen it. I thought I seen a um, propeller fly off of it too, but I maybe am not. So darn sorry, sweetie. I baby this one over here because I have lost so many by being foolish. So Lester's doing a search and recover on his drone. Hey, it still looks like it's in good shape. Uh, my camera's completely gone. Oh my gosh. So. You know if you lose your camera, your drone is really just a flying toy. Wow. So Lester completely lost his camera. The entire... How about that, buddy? Wow. It wants to fly again. It's like, take me off. I'm ready. Yep, it self-landed itself on top of a pine tree. <gasps> You know, you would think it was, if it was going to say returning home, it would at least go to a certain altitude first. Yes, that was nuts. Well, rest in peace, little drone. <laughs> It'll be a fun 
tool to fly around. But that camera's got to be right here somewhere. It, it, look, it broke all the fiber optics. I'll never be able to replace that. Here's the problem. Lester found his drone, his battery. It wants to come back on, but there's no camera on it. Yeah, the Lester. Good news is my SD card is still here. Oh, so good. I'll just direct it over here. Is this where they seen the den at? Yeah. Right over here. There's a lot of uh, wildlife activity out here. They got the hog trap. And then the, down here on the side is where the den's supposed to be at. So yeah, this is gonna be in there. Is that it right there, Lester? No. Walk right. There's a den. There's one right there. It sure is. How fresh do you think that looks? So I don't see any recent digging. No, the leaves and stuff run around the front of it. Yeah. I mean, they definitely were using it. There's no doubt about it. So there's, there's another den up there, but I think that might be a little small for a coyote, but it could possibly be one, but it's old. And then here's the newer one right here. And it goes pretty far back in there too, Lester. It goes in different directions too, but yeah, they go, they go a lot further than I can see. And it kind of turns. This one here goes kind of upwards. But these hill embankments are perfect for den making. Yes. Because it's a, Mother Nature does all the work for them. They've got a little entrenchment and they're good. There's another one. But it's, they're old, they're not using them right now. If you can see, it's all kind of caved in a little bit. So this is where they thought all the coyotes were actually staying and hiding on the side of this hill. And there's several dens already. I don't see any super active ones. So maybe they have their puppies and they've left. They've outgrown that den. And a lot of times, when you do come across an active den with pups, there'll be bones scattered all around it. Um, I've come across several of them uh, whenever I work for the state. Really interesting stuff because you can see all the skulls and everything else, what they've been eating their whole life. So the mom is actually going out and catching the prey, either it be chickens, goats, like at Lester's, whatever it is. Usually it's, it's super simple, easy prey, and they get rabbits, and they'll, they'll get them, and they'll bring them back to their den for their pups to eat. Um, after they're done, you know, when they're all to the age where they're not nursing and stuff. Um, and that's that's when you know the pups were more mature. And, uh, yeah, that's from my experience anyways. They're eating when they start to eat solid meats and rip things apart like Lester's poor goat. So. There's a smaller um, den up underneath that root. Small animal. There's spider webs all in it, so they're not using that. There's a lot of inactive dens around here whether they be coyote dens possum whatever raccoon we have raccoons that stay in hollow trees around our place there's an active trail going through here too like a super active trail for the wildlife look at this there's like a little highway going through here right through there look at that so if i was going to hunt this if i was going to deer hunt it or even hog hunt I'd be setting up on, on the thick, probably about 10, 15 yards inside. Have me some shooting lanes. And this trail, I would be actually hunting the trail. It is super active. It's crazy. See, there's a random orange flag. That's a marker for something. That's what's interesting. It's a marker for something. What is this? Do anyone know what that is? Is that bamboo? Oh yeah, look at that. It's a piece of bamboo, I guess. Just a wild native bamboo. That's pretty neat. Look at that just comes off. Cane, is it cane? Cane pole? So I can bend this one over. I would cut it off and then bend it like that. 
and then whenever I tripped it, it would spring back up. So you can make you can make some pretty cool little traps with these. So I see a big hole, like a giant hole up in a tree over there. I guarantee there's a family of raccoons or an owl family living in there. This looks like um, there was power down here at once, for sure. There's a power pole. And there's no road that comes down here, so this is interesting. Look at this. Oh, I don't know. No, maybe right here at one time there was a road. So it looks like that the old, that really active trail at one time was an old road. Makes me wonder if there was an old cabin down here at one time because there was power. There's a tin horn over here. This is this is pretty dang cool. This could be an old, original, abandoned um, homestead at one point. Look at this. Okay. Someone used to live down here, I think. Yep. I found a dump site. There's no telling what you'll find in an old dump site like this. Look at this. They did have a road down here at one time. So that does tell you a lot of rain comes off of here for them to have a tin horn because it's washing out. Look at this. You been down here before? Yeah. Did you know there's an old car in the ditch? That's an old RV. Uh, not an RV, the old Volkswagen bus. Wow. So. I don't know how you'd ever get it out. No. That was a remnant of Hurricane Harvey. Wow. It washed up from somewhere and fell into that little creek. And that's where it still sits today. So was there an old homestead down here? I see electric, a tin horn. A, there was a road down here at one time. Yep. And look at all the uh, pipes. Yeah, they're everywhere. Lester, those tin horns like that could 100% be a den. They'll crawl, yeah, there. they'll crawl right up in there, no doubt. You want to peek in there? I can get over there without getting snake bit off. Dude, if it gets you, I'll, I'll be recording for you. <laughs> uh, yeah. Come here. What is it? You don't, you don't see eyes in the back of it. Look. Oh, what is that? What is it? There's eyes back there. Oh Look my at gosh. It. Dude, this is like 400 It goes way up in there. It sure does. And there are right eyes. Right there, right there, right there. Red eyes. There's red eyes looking back at us. I cannot see, and I can't scope in far enough to see. You see the red eyes? Yeah, why? Dude, there, they, there could be a hole. Then. It looks a little low. What is it? Oh, that could be a raccoon or anything, really. They, this thing's something. like, it looks huh? like 60 foot long. Yeah. I hear water. Oh, wow. Could have been, Lester. Yeah, we thought we seen something, but it was these holes right here. So this was actually made like this. That is so strange to me. So that would have had to have been, that's from years and years yeah. and years ago of some kind of development down here. So I have- Do you no hear idea. the stream? There's like a creek running or something. Well, the river's right on the side of us, right 30 yards, maybe less. Oh, there's water running over there. Oh, dude, that's a good one. Wow. Look how smooth and clean that is. So I knew I heard some. So I will say this that we've not had rain here in 72, 73 days. And this here is beautiful. That's, that's creek water. 
that's probably spring fed. It has to be spring fed. And so we have a couple of springs on our place, but they don't run like this. They just trickle out of yeah. the ground. This kind of reminds me of our creek that the yeah. springs is always flowing. Mm -hmm. So Lester, there are dens are up there. There's active trails for all the like all the wildlife, and they got a water source other than the river. Yeah, this is ideal, an ideal spot for your predators. The only problem is I could never come here without you. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I was saying earlier. What you taught me is really great lessons, like a lot of neat things I learned from you last night and over the course of the week, but. You do need a wingman for this kind of stuff. <laughs> you do. I'm not one. Do you hunt alone? Alone? I do, but I've been doing it since I was a little kid. Well, I'm not saying that I'm scared. I'm saying that I just I wouldn't so you get hurt or not thinking well, of stuff. I just don't think I would think of everything, and that could lead to getting hurt or getting. So now I take my hurt. take my daughters hunting. I do more hunting with them than anything else. Yeah, this is cool, man. So you may not know this about us, but uh, Jamie and I bought this property to be sort of our bug out. Yeah. Our, our, and so when we bought the shop in the small apartment, we made sure it had a generator, mm -hmm. propane generator that can run the entire shop without anything. And if you notice back at the shop, one side is all of our prepping. Yeah, I yeah, mean, I we that. have our totes full of all of our prepping. Then her side is full of our, all of her gardening, canning, yep. pruning. And so we do have a plan. And I know that if the time ever comes, then the... Longhorn Lester have become the great hunter <laughs> yep. to provide our meat source. She tried to raise beans for protein and she grew an entire row of beans and collected maybe that much in a yeah, jar. And I'm yeah. like, we ain't live on the beans. <laughs> We're gonna have a real protein Dude, source. I'm just gonna throw this out there. Them ostrich, uh, what'd you call them, drumsticks? Look pretty <laughs> good to me, pretty good. Well, we'd have to live off them ostrich eggs. So now Jamie can do the water glassing too that I brought her. There you go. Yep, perfect. Okay, so we're wrapping it up. We had success. Hold on, we crashed my drone. <laughs> I was gonna come to get that. This we had success a... and failure. So give us a little recap, what went down the last few days. Okay, so I'll just kinda, I, hey, I'm a man of many words. Okay. So I, I, normally it's a few words. I'm a man of many, I can talk. So okay. shut me up when you're ready. We've had a coyote issue. I reached out to Sean, uh, talked about my issue. He uh, gave me some advice, some pointers, and then he offered to come down and help. And so together we went out and we got us a game call. We tried to call some stuff up last night. We were able to find one that we had a successful, what's the word that we can? Harvest. Uh, harvest. <laughs> we, we harvested one. Now that's all on, gonna be on your video that I filmed for you. Okay, yes sir. Yeah, Sean was our cameraman. He, he forced me to be the shooter, which, uh, which is fine. Um, um, so that was last night. Um, today we took the drone up to kind of scout out some of the river, along the river where they, they've been running. Uh, ended up crashing my drone in the, in the dense foliage. We found most of the drone. Uh, we can't find my camera. The camera is gone. But I do have my SD card still attached. We'll be able to get the footage of the, yeah. <laughs> that we have. And then uh, we found several dens, lots of neat, neat, uh, den locations. And so all the yapping we've been hearing or yipping, whatever they call it, now we found all that's coming from mm -hmm. so what i'm going to do after this day is continue what you've taught me i'll i'll continue to bait down by the river i'll continue to go down and call and then i'll sit in the stand and i'll continue to make a kill a night if i have to yeah. until we can extract enough of them is extract exterminate yep uh, i'm not sure exactly how extinguish say it. extinguish extinction <laughs> i just don't want to say the key the cable yeah. uh until we no longer have an issue now, let me ask you this question. I was going to go down and cremate the one that we got last night because I cremate a lot of the animals yeah. when we lose them. But my thing is, my dad used to take a rattlesnake or a copperhead and hang it up. Mm -hmm. He would hang it up, and he always says that will keep other snakes away. Yeah. Do you think there's any truth to that? I don't know. Well, in Oklahoma, and in my area, people do that all the time. We'll drive and we'll see anywhere from five to seven Cody's up on their wooden post. So they hang they're, them up. Yep, they hang and they them up. think that will deter others from coming in the area. It's either that or they're showing them off. Oh, I don't care to show them off, mm -hmm. but uh, and I don't want to draw more coyotes to the, to the smell of yeah. that decaying coyote. Um, That's interesting. So here's one interesting thing too we haven't talked about yet is the pole. So Rocky was spared. He didn't have to go into the cage. No, as a matter of fact, we have Rocky right here with us and he's fine, guys. Rocky's good and he's going to have a forever home at 
our other property. He's not going to live here. <laughs> We're going to continue to keep the peace and tran tranquility of Longhorn Lester's intact. So Rocky will be making a ride over there today with That's me. That's awesome. <laughs> so I was looking at my poll numbers. I had 75% of you all said, spare him, just hunt out of the blind. 25% said, Yes, use, use them. them. <laughs> Yours was like 90% said no. My people love animals, brother. Yeah. My people love animals. And that's, just, it's, a, it's, a, it's great that you and I can still be as close. Yeah. And we may have a different mindset, you know, as far as hunting and all yeah. that, you know, and you're an outdoorsman and you're a survivalist and you're a prepper and all those kind of things. And whereas you prep for things like that, I prep for beans and yeah, yeah. <laughs> canning. Yeah. <laughs> but it's awesome that we can still share people and, you know, because when it all boils down to it, we're humans mm -hmm. and we're looking out for our families and we're looking out for each other and we're looking out for, you know, for, for us. And that includes our animals and our farms and, you know, all that goes yep. with it. So. One thing I had determined is we need to get together when it's actually nice. It was snowing and sleeting at my place last oh, it, winter. Yeah, now it's was, yeah. 100 degrees here. I had here. frostbitten toes and fingers <laughs> after that trip. And then, yeah, and then, of course, we're sweating bullets over here. Our caps are ringing yes. wet. This is sweat. We ain't watered our faces down. This is sweat coming off our cap bills. It's been a fun time, Lester. Yeah, Thanks so. for having me. And um, I'll come down anytime. Next time uh, I heard you had the mountain lion issue possibly in the county somewhere. Was it local, like here? So I have photographs of an actual horse that was pulled down just down the road here yep. just down the road here and I went by yesterday and took pictures before you got here and it was where something had grabbed the back of the horse and rode it to the ground wow and then of course at some point yeah. went to the neck but the claw marks on the back of the horse is from the hindsight so it's wow. obviously, obviously a cat down a horse and big cat and that's not the first horse wow. another one a month ago uh, right up the road so that's obviously Man. a cat not coyote but uh, man, this is wild country, brother. This is it wild is. country. It's beautiful, and uh, as much as we love it, but it is definitely wild country. And I wouldn't trade it for anything. It's I, awesome. I, 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 I love, love it. it. So uh, if you guys are not following Longhorn Lester on Facebook and YouTube, go check him out. You guys will have fun. He does a lot of awesome stuff with a lot of animals. I did a lot of reels I'm going to be posting on my Facebook, so they can check those out too. Okay. And um, I made the reels, so direct back over, you can see the full story behind all the animals that we're going to show you guys. So thanks for having us, Lester. Thank you for being a part of it. <laughs> see you guys on the next one.